On Saturday, the 1st of May, I'm going live. Don't miss it. See you there. Dear Noble Ones, welcome back to my channel. This is the Metatron speaking and today we are talking about a very intriguing piece of kit belonging to feudal Japan, the Mempor. Okay, so let's get started just by wearing this very quickly. And then I'm going to put on my kabuto, my helmet. The things I do for you, noble ones. There we go, I'm ready for battle. I've always found the Mempo extremely intriguing and fascinating. You see, when I first started my channel and I was doing research on the Mempo, when I bought this full set of armor from Iron Mountain Armory, I thought the Mempo is really interesting, but did the samurai actually use it? So I was researching and at first I thought this, this was part of the samurai set, the full outfit, but they were not using it in battle. But then as I continued my research, I found iconography that shows, uh, without the shade of a doubt, samurai using Mempo in combat, including in war. So now we understand that the Mempo, and this is my current belief, is that the Mempo was used, maybe it wasn't used by all samurai, it was relatively rare, but it was used by some samurai in combat situations. But then again, some didn't. So this choice, is really what we're going to talk about today. What are the pros and cons of wearing a Mempo when you're getting ready for combat? This face protection for samurai armor was introduced to the samurai equipment during the Muromachi period. However, not all Mempo look like the one I have. There are four different typologies of masks and they are identified from the portion of the face they cover. Hanbo. This is basically a chin guard which sometimes reaches the cheeks. It is the oldest model and probably the most commonly used in battle. Menoshita Men. This mask covers the lower part of the face under the eyes, including the nose, which is generally detachable, like the one I have, and it was created during the Momoyama period, becoming very popular during the Edo period. Soumen. This is a mask that covers the whole face of the samurai. It could be divided into two or three parts in order to be partially worn, but it was used for parades and social occasions, not on war. Some models would have one or more draining holes for sweat under the chin. Apart from serving the function of principal face defense, masks helped secure the helmet to the head more firmly and counterbalance it. Hapuri. This is a very interesting one because it's the other way around. It's from the top to the bottom, protecting the forehead and the upper side of the head. Quite unusual but very cool type of mask. There were several kinds and designs, for instance, Rese. This is the most common Mempo shape, with exposed teeth, wrinkles and moustache. This kind of Mempo was invented in Nara, and it is basically the only one used during the Momoyama period. Ryubu. In this case, the expression of the Mempo is noble and relaxed, without teeth, wrinkles or moustache. This is my favourite, and hopefully, eventually, soon enough, I'll have a replica made for me. Okina. With beard and long moustache, this Mempo has the characters of an old person. Tengu. This samurai mask has the beak of the mythological creature with a bird's head, the Tengu, and it has a separate mouth under the nose. Mempo with a long human nose represent Sojobo, the king of the Tengu. Karuramen. The Karuramen is a subcategory of Tengumen, but does not show a separate mouth under the nose. Karura is a creature from the Buddhist tradition with a similar face to the Tengu. To dive more deeply into the psychological aspect of Mempo, we have to imagine one thing. A person who wants to kill you in battle is an immediate threat, which clearly can generate fear. But a mask is able to generate fear even when there is no immediate clear danger, no obvious threat. It's this vagueness, ambiguity, that causes cognitive dissonance in your brain. Claude Lévi-Strauss, a French anthropologist whose work was key in the development of the theory of structuralism and structural anthropology, said, the facial disguise temporarily eliminates from social intercourse the part of the body which reveals personal feelings and attitudes. A mask hides the intentions of the person wearing it, which is why even happy-looking masks can give us the creeps. It's what psychologists call the uncanny valley, and Vsauce has a dedicated video to this. Something is almost entirely human 
except for one or two details. It's interesting because generally speaking, masks don't trigger a simple fear response. They put our brain in a position where it doesn't know what it should do, which makes us feel uneasy. Into a military context, where you already know the opponent wants you dead, your brain receives a double stimulus, partially contrasting. Now, contextualizing this into the 14th century and 15th century, you also have to put mythology in it, elevating the samurai into the realm of the supernatural. Here's a fantastic masterpiece by Mune Akira. This mask was already famous when published in 1763. Jikoku Ten, Guardian of the East, one of the four kings of heaven. It's interesting because this mask is also one of the few to retain its original silk head covering sewn to the upper edges. Many are the weapons that a samurai could encounter on the battlefield. The katana, for example, yes, sure, a backup weapon, but still present and definitely not pleasant. You have the kanabo, a sort of anti-armor weapon of the feudal period, and you get hit with this, not very nice. Then you've got the yari, uh, you know, many, many different kinds of weapons, naginata, nodachi, you name it. Mamma mia. And that's clearly the reason why Samurai bothered with all of this metal armor, because contrary to popular belief, people say, is that plastic? And I'm like, face palm. And then other people say, is that bamboo? This is a myth, kind of has to do with the ori origins of Kendo. No, it's not bamboo. No, it's not plastic. In the majority of cases, it's iron or steel. And occasionally you can have Samurai armor covered in leather, and other times you do have Samurai armor that is only leather, but in the majority of cases, it's iron or steel. And they bothered wearing all of this because protection was extremely important. So, mempo now. What are the pros and cons? Well, we can definitely divide the pros of wearing a mempo into two, protection and psychological effects. So I'd like to show you what I mean when I say protection. Let me wear this mempo. So this is one of the two different ways that you can wear the mempo. I'm currently wearing without the nose guard. I will put this one on, I will mount it on in a minute. But the first thing that you can see is that, yes, of course, this part of my face is now protected in plate, but most importantly, and this is really the part that I like, I'm wearing the so-called Yodare Kake. This is a movable protection for the throat. Now, it's not my favorite protection ever. I actually prefer nightly kind of European protection for the throat. But this is nice to have, because if I don't have it, if I'm not wearing the mempo, look at what happens. My throat is completely exposed. Given. You can, and it was done, wear this one alone without the chin guard of the mempo, which means that you would basically fasten it behind your neck and then you would have somewhat a cert certain level of protection on your throat. Although again, it is really the section that it's from the chin then attaches directly to the lower part of the, these little segments here that provides most of the protection for this part, which is vital. So. Even if you could you know, theoretically not wear it and wear something else here, still, I would feel more protected. And this kind of brings us to the idea of would I prefer to wear this? Because we have established, yes, yeah, some samurai did, some samurai didn't. But what would I do? And naturally, what would you do? Well, let me know in the comments below. Well, the protection for the throat is definitely a big incentive for me. But what about the actual protection to the face? Well, let me now wear it completely together with the nose guard so we can examine how much actual protection and coverage I've got. So now I'm donning the full mask. How much protection does it actually give me? For my face. I'm going to say moderate protection because even though it has very good coverage, I mean look at this, if a full-on strike with a heavy weapon, I want to say even with a bladed weapon, came and hit me right in the face, yes it would still be preferable, without it you would probably kill me, it would be a lethal blow, you would open my face up. With this you're surely not going to cut but you're still probably going to break my nose, you're still probably going to break something. So that could happen. But for medium to light hits, this is fantastic. So don't worry, this is not sharp. But if this came and someone was attacking me and I managed to deflect it, or maybe I'm out of range, but still part of the blade arrives and it cuts, well, I'm safe and that's not a small thing. It's kind of a damage control, if you will. It gives you a chance to mess up 
during combat. Not completely mess up, because as I say, if a full-on strike hits me, even with the mask, you're still going to break stuff in my face. Medium to sort of light attacks, this is going to be fine. Even if someone was thrusting with a Yari and you hit me in the face, this could prevent you from killing me. But I think my favorite thing about the Mempo is the dehumanizing factor. So when I'm not wearing the Mempo, my face is a mirror to my soul and the eyes, of course, uh, meaning that let's say that I'm afraid of you. So we're getting ready to fight. And then through my face, you see that that's how I look. You know, I'm afraid you can read it, which means if you're an experienced swordsman, you can exploit that swordsman to say anything really, spearman, whatever. If I am angry at you because you just killed my comrade, my, my friend, well, you can see this. Like I'm raging and you can read that and you can use that against me. If I am very calm, you know, I'm waiting for you, I'm in my position. I show that I'm really calm and I'm focused. Again, that's information and information is important, particularly during a lethal duel. Now what happens if I'm wearing the mempo? Okay, so you can still see my eyes, but the situation now is a lot harder to read. And imagine if there is a little bit of shadow, if there is confusion, if there are the people around, perhaps I've got the sun behind me, it's really difficult to just see my eyes. So this is me afraid of you. This is me angry at you. And this is me completely calm. This is the humanizing. It is very difficult to read your opponent. And in a way, it also gives the samurai a sort of non-human, supernatural aspect. For me, psychology is extremely important and I wouldn't give a pass to this. So the idea of I can scare my opponent, I can make him think that I'm tougher than what I am. I'm going to get an advantage because I can read him and he can't read me. I would wear the mempo, whether it be duel, whether it be battle, I would definitely choose to wear it because I think it does give an advantage. As we said, the majority of masks were half length. Both the outside and the inside surfaces are lacquered. Often, the interiors are lacquered red. During the Edo period, armorers like Myochin clan took pride in making even more varied masks as a demonstration of their creativity and their famous metalworking skills. Now, let me give you, let, let's imagine a little bit of a story now. Let's say that you are a farmer in feudal Japan and you are sick of how you've been treated, you're paying too much taxes, you're overworked, you are sick and you, you just can't stand it anymore. So you rebel together with a bunch of friends. And what you expect to happen, yours is a small insignificant village. So yeah, they're going to be annoyed, your feudal lord. But eventually, they, maybe they will listen to you now. Just like they listened to the other people that rebelled in a nearby village. But your feudal lord is not having any of that. So he sends samurai. And you see them arrive. And you see this guy coming towards you. He saw you, you are his prey, you are his target, and you know that as a samurai, the more heads I cut, remove, and bring back to my overlord, the more reward I will receive. So for me, you're just a trophy. And now you see me running towards you. I want you dead and you cannot read my emotions. I am a merciless, emotionless, killing machine and I'm coming for you. If I were the farmer, I would be running away screaming. Now I'm just your friendly neighbor, pasta eating Italian. So considering these two things, the protection that I get and the extra psychological effects, I would definitely choose to wear the mempo in combat. But what about you? And interestingly enough, of course, I'm going to lose some of the comfort because, you know, as I say, I'm sweating. I mean, my beard is helping, be, helping me a little bit, but you know, some would I usually wear shaven in the majority of cases. Occasionally you would have some samurai with some beard, but in the majority of cases they would be clean shaven. Um, probably doesn't really matter too much, but I'm just saying there is a little bit of discomfort here. But for me, the advantages outshine the disadvantages, but that's just me. Would I wear it in combat? Absolutely. Would you? Well, let me know in the comments below. All right, noble ones, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please remember thumbs up. And if you're not yet members of this community, become a noble one. Subscribe to my channel for more content from the Metatron. And remember, the Metatron has spread his wings. Goodbye.